prisoners in the U.S. that are making your food. Because as we pretend that other countries are authoritarian and have slave labor and oppress their people, um, yeah, we still have slave labor. And so this, this was actually uh, a piece done by AP, which I was kind of surprised. It happens. Even a it blind happens. squirrel finds a nut yeah, yeah, sometimes. Yeah. Well, this is a hell of a nut. And we've talked about prison labor in the past, too. Like, uh, you know, all kinds of labor, like Victoria's Secret is involved with prison labor and uh, firefighters and things like that. So it's not like, oh, my God, we're forcing prisoners to work as slaves. Like, that's not the newsworthy part. The newsworthy part is that they did a deep dive specifically into the agricultural sector. It's really just like it like history doesn't repeat itself, but it rhymes like this is a hell of a rhyme. Um, not only that, the, that people are, as they point out in this, uh, for instance, some prisoners work on the same plantation soil where slaves harvested cotton, tobacco, and sugarcane more than 150 years ago, with some present day images looking eerily similar to the, similar to the past. In Louisiana, which has one of the country's highest incarceration rates, men working on the quote, farm line still stoop over crops stretching far into the distance. And one of those prisons, Angola, is literally built on a former Southern slave plantation. So wow. it's like, I do, don't even want to change the signage, maybe. Right. Like, I really, this is like the kind of shit that you'd expect to read in some horrifically twisted script. But this is the script of the United States. And so, again, this is specifically about the agriculture sector. And they outline... I mean, just on the face of it, how horrific this is, but also uh, issues that, you know, for instance, if they refuse to work, some can jeopardize their chances of parole. Right. Which... So it's not actually a free choice. People, no. people like to pretend you'll hear this from people that, uh, you know, support the prison firefighters, uh, the idea that they should get to work as well. Well, it's it's a free choice. To, if you are a prisoner in a oppressive system in the largest prison state in the world, and you decide to be a firefighter, a deadly activity to just get a chance out of those prison bars. That's not a free choice. That is incredibly oppressive choice. And then also, if you refuse, you could end up in solitary confinement, which is, as we pointed out many times, is is torture. Um, now, these goods that the prisoners produce on farms uh, across, but predominantly in the South, also <laughs> a little... Uh, E e echoing of, of history here. These uh, goods wind up in the supply chains of a dizzying array of products found in most American kitchens, from Frosted Flakes cereal to ballpark hot dogs. I've always thought Frosted Flakes tasted a little like slave labor. Just <laughs> a touch. Gold, gold metal flour, Coca-Cola, and Riceland rice. They're on the shelves of virtually every supermarket in the country, including Kroger, Target, Aldi, and Whole Foods. And some goods are exported, including to countries that have had products blocked from entering the U.S. for using forced or prison labor. Now that's, yeah. Here are some of the brands listed here, although a lot of these brands own a ton of brands. So when you see right. Coca-Cola on here, that also means like ha water half of all water brands yeah. or whatever. Like it, there's a lot of, yeah. The uh, Tyson also owns like a shit ton of... Car um, Cargill actually owns 25% uh, of the entire farm to plate process uh like every aspect of it so when you say cargill it, like you it, can't yeah. it means everything like um they also outline how uh even if you even if you get out to the field and you you know if you pass out or if you refuse because it's just uh it it, it, it you know you throw down your tools uh or in you know in protest one man um uh, Willie Ingram talks about what happened when, when somebody would do that kind of action. They'd come maybe four in the truck, shields over their face, billy clubs, and they'd beat you right there in the field. Jesus. They'd beat you, handcuff you, and beat you again. So it's free choice. Free choice. So, like, I'm struggling to actually see the difference between this and slavery, uh, particularly when you consider the fact, like, Willie Ingram, who's sharing this story received a life sentence after pleading guilty to a crime he said he didn't commit. And he told he was told he'd served 10 and a half years 
But it wasn't until 2021 that a judge finally released him. So he spent 51 years in Angola when he was told that he would spend 10. Jesus. So that's a life sentence just like, oh, I don't know. Slavery was a life sentence. So I'm really struggling to see the distinction between these two horrific, uh, uh, I don't know, what do you want to, these, these acts of U.S. empire. And when you consider the fact, too, that two, roughly two million people are locked up um, and the U.S., because of this, the U.S. prison labor system has morphed into a multi-billion dollar empire extending far beyond the classic images of prisoners stamping license plates or battling wildfires. Uh, an analysis, now again, this is just agriculture, but prison labor has its hands things. in every industry, basically. Yep. An analysis of data amassed by the AP uh, traced nearly $200 million worth of sales of farmed goods and livestock to businesses over the past six years. A conservative figure that does not include tens of millions more in sales to state and government entities. Much of the data was incomplete, though it was clear that the biggest revenues came from sprawling operations in the South. And, wait for it, leasing out prisoners to companies. <laughs> this is legit. Like, this is where slave patrols, i.e. modern day police, came from, was plantations used to lease out slaves. Like, literally, like, this is the and same playbook. Like, I... The, what? This, this is how the South maintained their uh workforce after slavery was ended was they obviously it continues to be in the constitution that you can enslave people who are prisoners so in the south people and you know you could say cops but cops were any white guy with a gun could be called a cop would grab any black guy they saw that wasn't uh you know in a house or something and and just throw them in jail. And then those jails would lease out the prisoners to the plantations. So basically they were able to maintain slavery in a lot of these plantations, even after slavery was over by saying, Oh no, we use prisoners. And as you and I have discussed before, uh, sometimes the treatment was even worse than being a slave because if they killed the person or harmed them, uh, you know, injured them severely, they could just say, I need a new one. Yeah. Some advocates for this, who I wouldn't even uh, deign to call human, say that <clears throat> uh, say that you know, well, it's not that big of a deal because then they can use the skills that they get from being forced to into slave labor. They can use that once they get out of jail. <laughs> um, a that's a that's a ridiculous, hideous argument. Um, also, a lot of this is not what uh, what people would a want to or even have access to doing because it is specifically prison labor. So working in the fields of like these penitentiary of like the penitentiary fields, that's prison labor. So let's say you get really good at harvesting turnips or whatever the hell. Um, and then you go out into the world, but that's not a job that you can get because, oh, that was actually just a prison job. Second thing, once you get out of jail, I don't know if people know this, but that shit's on your record. And so it's incredibly difficult to get a job. And this was one of the arguments that was made with regards to firefighters. You can't become a firefighter if you've been charged. I think it's like a felony. Uh, so then they've gotten all of this, uh, you know, real life experience at fighting fires. But, oh, I'm sorry, you can't actually be a firefighter because you were in jail. So like when you were helping to save us before and you were in jail and now you can't do that now that you're out of jail. Sorry. So they're, yep. uh, you know, damned on the inside and then damned on the outside once they get out. And on the other side, like on the other, you know, the, the other part of this is that these companies, not only do they have access to slave labor, but then on top of that, they oftentimes get tax credits and other financial incentives to use slave labor. Of course, it's not like they have to be accountable to the prisoners uh, it's like an incarcerated workers have workman's comp. Like that's not a thing, right? Um, they don't have to have basic protections or like safe work environments. Yeah. So this is a sweet deal for these companies on every single level in terms of the economics. And there's really no recourse for the prisoners. In case people need reminding, we are the largest prison state in the world. Uh, we have the most number of prisoners, both by sheer number and per capita. Uh, and yet we point to other countries and say that they uh, are a prison state or things like that. We are the largest prison state in the world. 
and it's used for multiple aspects. Some of it is to make money like this, but that's not the prime driver of the largest prison state and the reasons for it. It is to uh, mainly stop people of color from becoming too powerful, uh, exercising too many rights over democracy um, and other aspects of community. And, uh, you know, a lot of the a lot of the people locked up have to do with drug crimes, which the drug war, the, you know, Ehrlichman, a former Nixon aide, actually admitted in the 1990s that the drug war was created in order to go after Nixon's two main rivals, which were the black community and the activist community. To this day, Democrats and Republicans, remember, they're all one party and they're all they're all one party and they support things like the U.S. being the largest prison state in the world. I just wanted to share a couple more points here. Uh, one one woman who was interviewed uh, by AP uh, shared that I was in a field with a hoe in my hand with maybe like a hundred other women. We were standing in a line very closely together and we had to raise our hose up at the exact same time and count one, two, three, chop. Faye Jacobs is black and she was released in 2018 after serving more than 26 years and said the only pay she received was two rolls of toilet paper a week toothpaste and a few menstrual pads each month there she is yeah. on, on the screen on the screen now also to to point out like how twisted this is it's not like you get to choose what kind of work you're doing so it says uh, also a point that the ap makes is corrections officials exert power by deciding who deserves trade building jobs like welding and who works in the fields so if they don't like you, they force you to, you know, work out in the fields, like in Louisiana, where it's a billion degrees. And in the article, they also mentioned that people would pass out and they wouldn't get water. They would just either start beating them or drag them or wh whatever. For some reason, this corrections official likes you, then you might get something that you could potentially use once you get out like welding. But again, that is predicated on your ability to get a job because you were in jail. So as one person put it, uh, Calvin Thomas, who spent more than 17 years at Angola, that's the Louisiana State Penitentiary that's a former plantation, uh, which is commonly referred to as Angola uh, because of the ancestry of those who were previously enslaved there. He said, you can't call it anything else. It's just slavery. And again, the U.S. Constitution has enshrined slavery. A lot of people think that it's illegal, but this is so legal because the 13th Amendment states that slavery and involuntary ser servitude are banned except as punishment for a crime. So this is legit enshrined in the U.S. Constitution. So anybody who tries to tell you that slavery is illegal, you'd be like, no, did you read till the end of the sentence of the 13th Amendment? Uh, and the map I'm putting up on the screen now is... Uh, prisons with agricultural programs. So as you can see, this is not a small number of prisons. This, and is, these are, this is just agricultural. This is dozens and dozens across the entire nation. And this is just agricultural programs, as you just said. Uh, whereas, as we also mentioned, uh, prisons have forms of labor, forms of slave labor, many other kinds, such as call centers. Sometimes you're on the phone talking to someone at a, you know, airline call center or something, and you don't even know you're talking to a prisoner. Um, they have people sewing garments. Uh, one of the craziest ones that I remember hearing about, although I don't know if this has changed since that time, but since a few years ago, but Victoria's Secret and, and other and other brands would get made in some other country by slave labor, you know, someone getting paid five cents a garment or something, and they get made by slave labor, and then they get shipped to the United States where the prisoners would just sew on the American flag saying made in America. So the made in America part was only the tag, not the garment, but all even the tag was sewn on by a prisoner. So made in America, yeah, hurrah!